What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Tevi, and this is Invest with T Claus. The focus of today's video is going to be on Virgin Galactic, which is one of the four cornerstone stocks in my portfolio, along with Tesla, NEO, and ChargePoint. And for 2021, Virgin is actually off to a great start. We're talking 44.46% gain so far this year, and it's only been a month, so pretty insane. And that's on the back of some recent good news that we've received. And that puts the stock price at around $34.28 as of the close of Friday. Now, we've been here before, uh, twice actually last year, the first time around February 24th, and then the second time around December 7th. And, you know, since then, we've seen a couple of things um, push the stock price back down, but then, you know, rebounded to where we are today. It's been a roller coaster to say the least, but I think at this point, Virgin has worked through most of the setbacks from 2020. It's finally started to find its stride. And in my opinion, the stock price is just on the verge of hitting warp speed. Kind of like... No, I cannot fail. That scene right there is the first time that Naruto was able to move at warp speed, dodging the obstacle in his way, and in the process getting the acknowledgement of those overseeing him. Very similarly, Virgin Galactic last year spent a whole year executing, despite the pandemic and everything else going on, gaining the acknowledgement of the Wall Street analysts covering the stock. There is nine of them covering the stock, and seven out of the nine are rating the stock a buy as of right now. And so just like them, I'm 100% on board with Virgin Galactic. This is definitely a longer term play, but I believe that they have a bright future. So in this video, we'll go over a quick background of who they are and what they do. We'll then watch a clip from their original IPO when they went public in October of 2019, what they promised at the time. And I'll interject with whether or not they've been delivering on those promises. We'll then go over a couple of catalysts that are coming in the near term. And I'll provide you with my short term price target as well as the where I see the stock going in five years. And we'll wrap things up with the weekly performance gain or loss on the portfolio by percentage. All right, with that said, let's get into the video. Interestingly enough, despite the fact that there's millions of people out there who would love the experience of going to outer space, myself included, you can see on the graph here that there's only ever been less than 600 people in the entire world who have been able to do so. On top of that, there's this common acknowledgement in the scientific community that there's a benefit to conducting experiments in microgravity or zero gravity. And that's the reason why every year um, millions of dollars are spent to send experiments to the International Space Station for astronauts to conduct uh, some experiments for the scientific community. But again, because of the cost associated with you know running those experiments, it's a pretty limited pool and many of them are not able to take advantage of that service. These are the two points that inspired Sir Richard Branson to create Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic is the first publicly traded space tourism company that seeks to open up space for the masses. And by the masses, I really mean high net worth individuals who can afford a ticket price of $250,000 per trip. And really what the ticket gives you is a four day event, which by the end of that event, you will fly into space and officially earn the title of astronaut. So how do you get to outer space if you decide to purchase one of these tickets? Well, unlike a mission with NASA or SpaceX, you don't actually get strapped to a rocket and get launched into space. Instead, you get into this spaceship that gets taken up by a carrier plane. And once you reach the 45,000 uh, feet mark, the spaceship separates from the carrier plane. And then the rocket booster turns on for 60 seconds and helps the spaceship accelerate to Mac 3. Uh, from there, it rockets you up to outer space, and that's 50 miles above the surface of the Earth, where passengers will experience zero gravity for several minutes before re-entering the atmosphere and landing at the spaceport. Now, this sounds great, and you're probably asking yourself, how feasible of a business is this really, and what is the opportunity for me as an investor? Well, the way that I think we can answer this question is by taking a walk down memory lane and seeing if the folks at Virgin Galactic have been living up to the promise that they made us. So in this next segment, we're going to hear from Sir Richard Branson, Jamath Palapatiya, and George Whiteside as they discuss the future of Virgin Galactic. This interview here took place back in 2019 when Virgin Galactic first went IPO. 
Let's see what they had to say and how well they lived up to the expectations. The fact that service hasn't actually started yet, how are you thinking about those gross margins when it does and what does that mean for profitability for this company? Uh, I think the profitability of this business is going to look as good as one of the best software companies around and that's why I was so excited. You're in the business of hardware but it looks like software and that is very different than many of the other technology oriented hardware companies that have gone public recently. So this is a business that at scale will have almost 70% operating margins, which is incredible. And it's a testament to, you know, the billion dollars that Richard has invested before I came here. And then the team that George has built that's been able to build something that is largely now de-risked and ready to commercialize and monetize. What do you think, especially now that there's going to be quarterly earnings reports, what do you think investors are going to want to hear from this company? I think there's going to be two vectors that are really going to matter. The first vector is to describe the demand. So there are already 600 plus customers that have paid um, you know, $80 million, about $120 million of future business. There's three or 4,000 more after today. I suspect there'll be many more thousands after that who want to give us money. And so I think understanding that demand will be really important for people to uh, get comfortable around the long-term projections. And then the second is about George's execution ability and his team's path to getting these rockets in the air uh, on a more and more frequent basis. As of the last earning call in Q3 2020, we know that there's still around 600 or so customers who have paid their ticket fees of $250,000 in full. So that's roughly $150 million in revenue that Virgin Galactic was able to lock in. In addition to that, they've added another 900 or so aspiring astronauts that have been signed up through the One Small Step program. And that's a program that allows uh, aspiring astronauts to put a deposit down for $1,000 to lock in their seat once commercial flight starts. So we can see here that despite the pandemic and a few setbacks that they've experienced last year, demand is actually going up and not dropping. So his comment around people wanting to give them money definitely rings true and holds true. I know the company is targeting next year to begin commercial service, 600 person backlog right now. How big is this market for suborbital space tourism? And I guess longer term, how many people are going to be paying $250,000 for a ticket to space? Well, the exciting thing, Morgan, is, is that um, we're in the, the highest growth part of the luxury sort of services experience. It's out of home luxury experiences is the part that's growing the fastest. And that's basically what we're doing. And so, you know, globally, we think around 2 million people can experience this uh, over, the, over the coming years at this price point. And then, of course, over time, we'll be able to reduce that price point. And at that point, the market just explodes like it's, you know, 10 times as many to 40 million people. So we think it's like a huge market and it's going to be capacity constrained for the near 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 term. At the time of the recording, Virgin Galactic only had one spaceship in service that could take up to six passengers to the edge of space. And you can see that with a backlog of 600 plus paying customers, that is a pretty huge constraint. Well, since then, they've built a second spaceship that will be going into service at the end of Q1 2021. As far as George's comment around explaining the total addressable market for their business, this really comes into play once they are able to drop the ticket price from 250 k to the $100,000 mark. And this should allow them to tap into a new pool of customers who have a high net worth between $1 million to $5 million, which is a lot lower than currently at the 250 k price point. Um, one of the questions that gets put to me a lot by prospective investors and is, um, how do you know it's going to be safe, right? And, um, and, and so when it comes to space, okay, when it comes to space, I mean, space is hard, human space flight even harder. Uh, it, it's got to basically go off without a hitch, near perfect, no real room for, for error here. Um, how do you ensure that that's the case? And, and what do you tell people? Well, it's actually funny. I was a customer first, and so me and my wife are going to go. Chamath's going to go. Richard is, of course, going to be in the first commercial flight. So we're, yeah. like, uh, very confident that this is going to be a safe experience. Basically, what it comes down to two things is one is we've got a very safe architecture that can abort in any phase of flight. And the other thing is that we've tested it extensively. So really, our system has been in test for over 10 years. And what we've been able to do is just really drive up the reliability of the system so that we feel a real high confidence in, in the system itself. Safety is definitely at the core of what they do, and to date they've completed 27 out of the 29 test flights required to obtain their commercial license from the Federal Aviation Administration. And during test flight number 28, we saw a great example of their safety measures going into action. So before the rocket motor could ignite, 
the onboard computer stopped the ignition sequence and the plane was able to safety glide back down to the ground, ensuring the safety of the crew as well as the spacecraft itself. So since then, Virgin Galactic released a statement indicating that they had identified what the something that went wrong was and that they were implementing corrections. So once those corrections are completed, they'll go back and reattempt test flight number 28. Now I expect that during the next earning call, we'll hear a little bit more about what the something wrong was, or at the very least here, when we can expect test flight number 28 to have a redo. Yeah, hypersonic travel has come up, this idea of point-to-point -point travel around Earth, um, and certainly seen, at least by some of the analysts that are starting to look at this industry as, as the big long-term opportunity. I know it's been discussed with Virgin Galactic as well. Was that always part of the plan when you started this company? It was. Um, we're already testing a... Um, a, a spaceship or an, or, or an aeroplane uh, that, that can travel from point to point at, at tremendous speeds. So we've just tied up with Boeing um, and we're going to be exploring um, point to point travel with them. How much was the hypersonic piece of this puzzle the driving force for you to invest? To me, it really represents the long term optionality in the business. So the way to think about it is long haul travel today, 10 hour plus flights, People are spending $300 plus billion dollars a year. And Morgan, a hypersonic plane can take a 10-hour flight and reduce it to 90 minutes. So the way to think about this is we're going to go and pioneer and really push this idea of space tourism, getting people to space. But as Richard said, once you do that, you get a test bed of technologies. We have a free option on hypersonics. And when we deliver a product in the 5 to 10-year time frame, we will be able to directly disrupt a $300 plus billion dollar revenue business for the airlines. In addition to the existing partnership with Boeing, last year Virgin Galactic also released a design for their brand new hypersonic plane and they partnered with Rolls-Royce in order to create a new high-speed propulsion engine. And so if you're wondering why the luxury car maker Rolls-Royce is mentioned here, it's because Rolls-Royce has a long history of producing high-speed propulsion engines and they were actually the masterminds be behind the engine of the Concorde, which was the last hypersonic plane in commercial service. But that's not all. Last year, in addition to the commercial side of the business, Virgin Galactic was able to secure two contracts with NASA. The first one awarding them $45 million to fly payload uh, to space in order to help scientists conduct experiments in zero gravity environment. And under the second contract, Virgin Galactic will create a brand new suborbital astronaut readiness program. And so as part of this program, they will identify candidates who are interested in flying in private missions to the ISS and conduct research. So again, this is geared towards scientists uh, that want to take advantage of the International Space Station and run um, scientific experiments in zero gravity. So again, following up on everything we've been talking about, and making good on those promises. So as mentioned earlier in the video, the stock is off to a great start this year. This week alone, 8% of the total 40 some percent that we gained year to date was achieved. Now, the real question is, how do we keep moving further up? What are some of the catalysts that are coming our way? Well, the first one is coming next month, and that's the 25th of February. That's going to be our earning call for Q4 2020. So things that I'm expecting to hear during that call are one, when do we expect the next rocket powered flight, so test flight number 28 to take place again? And two, when will we finally complete all test flights and obtain the uh, FAA license for commercial flight? The second catalyst is going to be the first commercial flight. Now during, during the Q3 earning call, they guided to having our first commercial flight at the end of Q1 2021. Now, I'm not going to hold my breath um, with the Rodin Rona situation still going on. I expect that there might be um, some delays here and there. And so really what I'm shooting for and looking forward to is the first commercial flight by summertime of this year. So my expectation is that if the first commercial flight goes off without any troubles, we can easily see the stock price skyrocket past the $50 mark. Again, not financial advice. This is just my expectation. And I would not be surprised if we shot right past 50. Now, longer term, Virgin is projected to grow its revenue by an annual growth rate of 167% between now and 20, the end of 2023. Now, the figures that you're seeing on the screen are not taking into account the fact that hypersonic flight will happen by mid-decade if we follow the guidance that Virgin Galactic provided. And that's around the same time that the airline industry is set to you know, recover fully 
But again, keep in mind that most of the current airline companies are struggling, right? And therefore, they're not going to be able to invest into the latest tech to go after a supersonic flight or hypersonic flight. So I feel that, uh, and I strongly believe that Virgin Galactic is in a prime position to benefit from taking a big share of the airline industry as Chamath guided earlier during the discussion. When we put it all together between the space tourism side of the business, the opportunity that lies with NASA, the various contracts and the scientific community, and the hypersonic opportunity on top of it, I can see that over the next five to 10 years, this is a stock that will easily achieve somewhere around $150 would be my guess. And the reason I say that is because space has really never been commercialized and the opportunity there is just infinite. Uh, that's again, not financial advice, but this is what I'm going after. And that's really the dream here. Uh, not the stock price itself, but the opportunity that space presents for investors and just for research in general. Okay, so it's time for a weekly performance review by percentage gain or loss. And so I'll bring it up on the screen here. And last week was a short trading week. So we can see that we didn't have Monday due to MLK Day. And we were actually were off to a pretty good start, um, right around 5.26%. And then, you know, dropped from there, uh, kind of traded sideways. Getting into Wednesday, uh, started just tumbling down. Thursday, uh, same thing. And then finally on Friday, saw a nice recovery. Uh, lending us at 4.52%. And since then, it's kind of moved around a little bit, uh, leading to the 4.79%. So all in all, pretty good week. Um, we can thank Virgin Galactic for some of the gains there. Uh, we saw that NEO came back as well. Uh, so as I mentioned in a previous week, yeah, uh, we it was expected to see some, you know, some drop in the stock price, you know, just a nice little correction or a pullback. And taking advantage of that definitely has paid off here. So, and hopefully you were able to take advantage of the dip as well and buy uh, where uh, it made sense to you. And if you did, leave me a comment below and let me know if you're seeing some gains uh, now after a week and if you held strong and didn't panic sell. All right, people, this will do it for today's video. If you enjoyed what I had to say and found the content insightful, please drop me a like and share with your friends as it greatly helps the channel grow. In addition, remember to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any future content that I post. Now, as a reminder, I post every Sunday and occasionally during the week. With that said, thank you for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.